So Marquis says to me, I'm sitting there all them nights in Magic City. That was the phrase that pays, man. Like, he's like, I missed that tag. Then out of nowhere, he goes, man, I got 99 problems. A bitch ain't one. I said, what'd you just say? Um, and he said, I got And I said, that's a song. So I made the song. Uh, you know, I got a hoe from the East. I got a hoe from the West. Mm -hmm. And then Marquise does a verse. That's it. Now, as the legend goes, Rick Rubin and Jay were getting ready to make a record. And Chris Rock was around, and they said, what record should we remake? And Chris Rock brought up 99 Problems. Big Boy Big Neighborhood's boy. 50th anniversary, Woo! man. 50 years of hip-hop is celebrated this year, man. And we can't talk about 50 years of hip-hop without having Ice T in the neighborhood. Yes. Pleasure to have you in the neighborhood, Ice T. Always a treat when players meet. Man. Hey man, ain't it though, man? And I'm here too. You know what I mean? I'm here too. I just gotta hey, be man. careful. My wife listening. No, you know, yeah, you know what it is, baby. You know what it is, man. But welcome back, bro. We've done this before, and like we were just kind of talking off off air, man. It's crazy when you walk into a room because. Everybody is a fan first yeah. when it comes to Ice T. And I think everyone has a point when they became an Ice T fan for whatever it is. If it was the music, like there's probably right. some people, Ice, that probably don't even know you made music. these hit. Yeah. Mm. So when when do you know if somebody is hip to you from Law and Order or they hip to you from the music? It's really hard to tell, you know, because hip hop has gray hair now. Yeah, it does. We're in the fiftieth anniversary, yes, so sir. you can meet a guy in a wheelchair. He'll tell you, "I'm a break dancer." You just don't know what right. someone did. So it's it's very interesting. Um, you can't tell, right? You really can't tell what they know. Now you think about it. I've been on Law and Order now, going on twenty four years. Man, ain't we're that about, crazy, bro? Yeah, we're how many? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, we yeah, we're on the 24th season. Hey man, is that crazy to you because the one thing with Ice T, right? <laughs> we always took Ice T as the pimp player hustler, all around cherry buster, whatever you wanted to do. Absolutely. But no one, I don't think no one looked and said, "Man, Ice T is playing the police." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't think that it was a withdrawal at all because that is probably the best hustle you ever had. My guys call me Kaiser Sosa. Yeah, hell yeah. They said the worst out of all of us is now playing the police. <laughs> yeah. and nobody can tell. Nobody sees him walking, you know. I mean, you know, as far as playing the cop, I think the biggest jump was when I did New Jack City. Yeah, yeah. Because that was the year I was dropping Original Gangster. So uh, now I'm dropping an album called Original Gangster, and they're offering me a chance to do a movie. Did called... you not want to do the movie at first? I was nervous. Really? I was scared to death. I mean... First off, no rapper had pulled off acting successfully. This is before Will Smith. Gotcha. The only only acting that happened was Run DMC and them doing Tougher Than Leather, right, Crush Groove, right, right. things like that, but not a real acting role. And uh, and totally beyond character. You know what I'm saying? Like you dude, just show up and you were just iced tea. Dude, when I got the offer to do the movie, I went I went down up to Warner Brothers and I read the script. I'm like. This is all the words. Like, I thought, you know, I'm about to go do a cameo. Yeah. And then they go, he got dreads. I'm like, I got a perm. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> like, was like, and he's the police. I thought it was career suicide. But uh, I called the homies. I said, yo, they want me to be in a pol in a movie. They want me to play the police. They word. Could I be in the movie? That's all. Right. They <laughs> you know, everybody hey, man, was but, go. But, but you got a thing. When we look in the rearview mirror, we like, oh, man, it worked. But when you look into that windshield, there's a lot of questioning that you have to ask. You know what I'm saying? And, and plus, man, we were so, it was so real at that moment as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, big boy, I never really had a problem so much with the cops as uh, people think, you know, even though I did cop killing and stuff like that, because we were real live criminals. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So we didn't look at, the, we didn't hate the police. The police were the opponent. You know, if you're selling drugs, the, the 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 cops create the margin. If it's not illegal, it ain't no hustle no more. You feel, you feel me? Gotcha. So if if we gonna rob a bank, we know it's illegal. We're not mad at the cops. We're just gonna beat the cops. Right. So a real criminal look like if you watch the movie Heat, the cops are the opponent, mm -hmm. not the enemy, so to speak. So when it was a time for me to do it, I didn't know how fans would understand that. But when I did New Jack City, people loved it. Right. And I was like, oh. They understand this is acting. And at that point, now when I see Samuel Jackson play Uncle Tom in a movie, right. you know, we don't hate Samuel Jackson. He's playing the character. 
So I I, already went, I got over that hump. So when it was time to do Law & Order, I didn't have any fear. I was like, let's go. It's acting. And with Law & Order, that what's the record now? Is that the longest running? Like, you are the longest running actor, actor. in television history. Man, so it's like you and Bart Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, because I, you can keep animating. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've been there. Honestly, Mariska has me by a year. But you know she's an actress. Got gotcha. you. So, as a male, funny when I when I would people would say they say the longest running black actor. No, 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 no act. Period. But you have to be on the show that's the longest running show. And right. Law and Order is the longest. SVU is the longest running show in history. We beat Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke oh. had the record. How about that? Hey man, and you see like the audience is fickle. Especially we've been through a lot, bro. Right. Where it's like you here today, you're gone tonight. Right. You know, you 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 for one, even just getting a pilot. Yeah. And then just getting, you know, four or 10 or 11 and even the back end. One season is good. Well, you know what? Dick Wolf likes me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my fifth show. I've actually done seven of Dick Wolf's shows. <laughs> oh, uh, and it all started with New, New York Undercover. Gotcha. And uh, I was at my house with Fab Five Freddy, and he had Andre Harrell on the line. Mm, rest, rest in, in peace. peace. And Andre was like, tell Ice-T to come do... New York Undercover. I'm like, nah, man, that's a ripoff of New Jack City. I ain't doing that show. What are you talking about? And I, I was on my bullshit. I was like, I'm doing movies, man. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, Have you seen what I do? Yeah, and then, then black people hit you with this one. Oh, you too big now, huh? Mm. Yeah, you too big. Damn. I was like, okay, give me a bad guy role, and I'll do it. And I played Danny Up on New, Jack, on New York Undercover. They let me go wild. And Dick Wolf was like, I love your, your, your energy. So I, I did Swift Justice, another one of his shows. <laughs> I did uh, Exile, the Law and Order movie. Then I had a show called Players with mm -hmm. Casas Mandalar and Frank Hughes. And then I got the call to do um, to do this show, and I was turning it down because I had Coroner Records up here in Hollywood, and I had employees and everything. And one of the homies was like, "Go out there, man, do four shows. You love New York City. Go do four shows." And it turned into twenty four years. Yeah, ain't that crazy though? Mm -hmm. Hey man, when did did you see that coming? Like, even with me, Ice, I'm like 29 years this year of see, radio. See, I wouldn't have even thought, like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still learning, and I'm still excited about it, you know? But if somebody would have said, man, because my thing was, my radio career, they asked me to do one night. And big, I was like, I'll go in and do that one night. Big boy, I remember you when you was a big boy. Yes, okay. yes, man. <laughs> you, you're like, yeah. big, you can't get in this car. <laughs> like, I, ain't, I ain't got a car that I can get you in, big yeah. boy. You definitely invited to the show. Yeah. No, I mean, I, one of my models, we're talking about Ice Cold Facts later in, in, in Daily Game, is you don't guide life, you ride life. Gotcha. You know, um, I'm I, so glad that you putting this all together with the podcast and yeah. just what, what you're doing, too, because I would see certain things on social media and yeah. I would even go and either repost or retweet. Right. So now you, you also found a, a home with, with iHeart as well. well. What happened was I, I was doing it on Twitter for so long because when I got on Twitter, I'm like, this is a waste of time unless you doing something, you know, giving people something. And a player always told me the best thing a person can, uh, another player can give another player is the game, game, is the game. So I would pick up all these different quotes from Bishop Juan and all my <laughs> other player buddies, and I would just put them on Twitter, and I call them the daily game. And then they also turned into ice cold facts, and uh, people loved them. So my manager George was like, "Man, we got to do a book or something." I'm like, "Nobody reads books, right. you know. You tell somebody you got a book, they like, where can I hear it?' Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, you have an right. audio of it? Right. So, you know, we connected with iHeart, and they said we got an idea. We'll do daily podcasts, short ones, five minutes. Yeah. With you dropping some knowledge, and uh, so far, people are very excited about them because they come from everybody, from Aristotle yeah, to man. different people. Uh, but the ones that I use in life. Hey, man, I love the one we were rolling in today, and I had a chance to listen to some where it was the you're free to choose, but not free from the consequences of your choice. And then you get into also where you start speaking about, you know, body count and cop killer. And also when you think back to where we are today with the cancel culture, you were one of the first people that I heard say freedom of speech, just watch what you say. Yeah, we, you, we all have the right to say anything, mm -hmm. but you got to be prepared for the ramifications of what you say. If you say something against gay people, be prepared for them to attack. 
Mm-hmm. They're going to attack. If you say something about Jewish people, be prepared for what they're going to do. The cops, I had to learn firsthand. You speak out on them, they're going to come see you. Right. You know? So, you know, I'd say you can't go home and s- to your wife and say, hey, yo, I just slept with your sister. Free speech. Right. You know? <laughs> Yeah. You, gonna, you, 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 you gotta know, deal with it. You gotta deal with yeah. what you say. Be like one of your old homies where you standing there and she she shoot at you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you so so yeah, we have the right to say anything, but be prepared for what happens when you say it. Are you concerned with the cancel culture? Nah. They've been trying to cancel me for like fifty years. Right. <laughs> I, I think people, a lot of people who, who have such a safe existence are, and no controversy in their life, the slightest thing can cancel them. Gotcha. You know, but it's like trying to cancel me as Snoop. Like, Snoop say bitch, you know. You know we, we, we're, so it's, it's on brand. Right, you know right. You what I'm saying? It's I got on, you. It's on brand. Ice T don't care. Ice T's going to tell you how he feels. Um, of course, you know, if I start beating my wife or doing something really stupid or ignorant, yeah. But, right. But I'll never do that because it took it, it took me, it was too hard for me to get here. I'm so conscious of everything I do and every move I make. It would be a serious mistake or lapse. I won't make that lapse in judgment. Something will happen maybe around me, but I won't. I won't play myself. Right, Let's right. try. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 yeah, I'm not going to play dun, dun. myself. Hey, man, how do you feel that you can go from, you know, being wrapped on SUV mm-hmm. and then jump on a plane and go do Ice T as a as a rapper, That's and the then the next day you can go and do Body Count. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like, like there is no box that Ice Ice T was actually put in. I never believed in the box. I mean, a box says yes, no, right and wrong. The player says, how come prove it? I don't know uh, why. <laughs> you know, we we open that box. So I, I just realized at some point in my life that this life is short and I'm better to do everything I want to do. You know, if I could drive Formula One cars, I'd be a race car driver. Right. There's a lot of things we want to do. And I've been very fortunate that as I tried these things, I've been relatively successful. Yeah, man. And, um... I'm I'm just happy with my life, you know, and you might not like my rap, you might not like my TV or my movies, but you might like something. Well, then you like you like a piece of me, and mm-hmm. I'll take that. You ain't got to like everything I do. Right. But it but having people like a piece of me is more than they like of most people. Right. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I have no complaints. But you also get in and get out too. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't hear crazy scandals or you don't hear like a lot of like, man, guess who I saw last night? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it seemed like you know how to get in, present yourself, iced tea and get out. Some people hustle to be seen. Others hustle to disappear comfortably. Yeah. I always wanted to disappear comfortably. I'm not really out there trying to be in the camera, you know. I married Coco, so when we out there, they on us, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. My, my wife is very high profile and beautiful, but really me, I'm, I'm, you know, low profile's better than no profile. Slow motion's better than no motion. I always wanted to be in the cut, you know, Meyer Lansky type, you know, in the cut. like. And uh, now with social media, that's more difficult. Yeah. But, you know. How do just, you use social media, though? You know, because you use it, very well. And you got to think, we come from we come from everything, bro. We come from, mm-hmm. you know, mailing a letter, pen pal. <laughs> yeah. We come from, you know, uh, 976-7070. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's yeah. been a lot of ways for uh, party lines to, to communicate. Yes. And now we're here where some people would say, man, I'm not messing with that. Right, right. But you know how to use it as a tool and as an instrument. Well, I had fan clubs back in the day. Right. I, I, on the back of my albums, I used to yeah. have people that would write in, and I would listen to the fans. You know, So Twitter became a, a way I could talk to a lot of people that wanted to talk to me and answer questions. I dug that. <laughs> I didn't really dig Instagram because I don't like taking pictures of everything. Right, I hear you. I'm from the era where no cameras. Yeah. So I didn't feel like – so What I, if you watch my, my IG – Sometimes I'm posting Twitter posts. Right. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a talk on yes. this. Yes. Because everything doesn't have to have a picture. You know, it's kind of corny. Like, and what are you taking pictures of? Yourself all the right. time? Your so, food. <sighs> yeah. I love when somebody would come at you and you'd be like, yeah, all right, shut the fuck up. 
<laughs> like, oh, okay. Oh, he replied to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I, when I got on Twitter, I created the final level Twitter gang because mm-hmm. I knew it was mob con- mob control, like who had the most people that were down with him. <laughs> then I blocked and muted anybody who wasn't really official. I didn't just want the, the viewers or the followers. I wanted solid crew. Right. right. So I got a couple million people that rock with me. If you say a bad joke and I don't like it, block. Yeah, man. Like, That's why I tell my block is hot. My block is hot. I block, <laughs> block it down. And then um, I just I just realized that if I could get curate my audience, then we could talk. Mm-hmm. We could have fun. Everybody's cool. Nobody's telling no dumb jokes and no bullshit. So it kept me. It keeps. I enjoy it. Instagram is another thing. Uh. I realize that the Twitter people are a little more softer. You can offend them quicker because they're <laughs> intellectuals. Right. And Instagram, you can just go hard. They they go harder, you know, because they're in the pictures. But regardless, I just enjoy it. I found uh, I don't think it's for people with soft skin because somebody's going to talk some shit to you. Yeah. or going to say some sucky shit. But I don't really, uh, I don't have no problems with that. P- see, I'm as nice as you'll let me be. You meet me today, (laughs) I'm as nice if you let me be. But if you want to go into that other zone, I'm very seasoned over there, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got no problems. You want the funk? We can get, you know. But this is the internet, and people are just talking. So, you know, somebody offends you, okay, block. You're like, yeah, we done dodge real shit. Real talk. (laughs) It's It's like... When you pull me over with a parking ticket for traffic, I'm like laughing because I don't got no body in the trunk. Right. No more. No more. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, man. Ice T in the neighborhood, man. Ice T, we're now at the 50th anniversary for hip hop. Yes, man. sir. And and we got a we got a history together. But how did Ice T fall in love with hip hop? That's a great question, big boy. Um. My first in- introduction with hip hop, I was in the army. When I uh, got out of high school, I had a daughter and I decided I wanted to go in the army to try to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. In the army, I was with cats from New York and they had tapes of hip hop. Yeah. The first the first generation of hip hop is unrecorded hip hop. It's only on tapes. That's flashing them in the park. That's before they actually made it to the studio. And they would play this music and I'm like, this is dope. You know, like I loved hip hop is intoxicating like when you it's a culture that makes you want to be part of it. And it's not like being an opera singer where you have to have a special t- um, God-given skill or vocal ability. With a little practice, you could become part of hip hop. Right. So I'm listening to it. Now I know at home, Uncle Jam's army is off the chain, Bay Five, all the different promotions are out here. I'm like, I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be like Uncle Jam's army. Gotcha. So I bought a bunch of stereo equipment when I was in the military. So when I touched down, I found out I got more attention by rapping than uh than uh Well you gonna DJ? Yeah. Oh. But carrying all them damn speakers yeah. around. And, and that's before we had like everything in a little laptop and you yeah. just all oh, just plug me in. Yeah. yeah, you had to pull up somebody's garage and set up the big EVs and you know, get it going. And that was I was like, but then I would get on the mic and get more attention. So I, in high school, I had already been writing raps, but I didn't know what they were. I would write rhymes for the gangbangers. You want to hear a gangbanger rhyme? Mm-hmm. You sure? Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, this is from Crenshaw High. This is like 1975. Uh, strolling through the city in the middle of the night. Niggas on my left, niggas on my right, yelling, cut, 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 rip to every nigga I see. Now, if you bad enough, come fuck with me. I seen another nigga, I said, Crip again. He said, fuck a Crip, nigga, this is Brim. So we pulled out the Roscoe. Roscoe said, crack. I look again, nigga was shooting back. So we fell to the ground, aimed for his head. One more shot, nigga was dead. Walked over to him, took his gun, spit in his face, and began to run. So when you see another nigga laying dead in the street in a puddle of blood from his head to his feet, mm. I hope it's time all you busses get hip. This fuck a brim, nigga, this West Side career. And that's from 75? That's 75, 76. So I'm saying this, I'm making these rhymes for the gangbangers, right? And um, they like, say my, put my name in that cuz. Yeah. You know, say that. But I didn't know about rap. That was just... Hustler toasting, you know. Yeah. Hustler's been toasting for before me, you know, Iceberg Slim, all the cats yes, say the player toast. So it was that that was my form. I would do it for the gangbangers because I was never in a gang. But if you entertain them niggas, you can keep them off your bumper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so I was a dancer and stuff, but I was I was saying these rhymes. So when I heard rap, I said, I can do that. I just have to learn how to 
put it on beat, get it in, you know, get in the groove. And that was the beginning. I, I met Henji and Evil E, mm. the New York City Spin Masters, and they were doing parties. I said, let me tag along to your parties. Then I started getting on the flyers with them. And we were all through Cudahy and all over L.A. And um, then I met Unknown DJ. Mm. The unknown was like, yo, let's make a record. And that's when I made Dog in the Wax, Six and More. Also, I made a record with uh, Kid Frost and them uh, over there, uh, David Storis and them, Peebo. Uh, we made a record called Killers and stuff. But we were trying our luck and stuff. Hey, that, right, that was Killers, Killers, yeah. Killers, yeah. Killers. My yeah. first record, though, my first record was called The Coldest Rap, and I was at Good Fred's getting my hair done. <laughs> <laughs> Some old pimp shit. My yeah. shit, my sh I, you know, I was permed up, baby yeah. Mac. Yeah, all y'all players know about them magnetic rollers. You know, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of body. My shit used to crackle when that came out, and, and and I had my shit was more wavy than the ships in the navy on a funky bitch. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so I'm in there talking my shit, and um, this guy Cletus Anderson and Willie Strong walk in. You don't they, find nobody named Cletus anymore. But go ahead. They own VIP records. Mm -hmm. Famous VIP records for Snoop Dogg dancing yeah. on the top of it, and they they made the record. They took me in the studio and I made Coldest Rap, uh, which was a Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis record. That's but man, crazy. I've been rapping. That was 1982 when I started my first rap record. Hey man, and when you look at it now, it's like okay, you could pretty much grab something, instantly become you know put it up and and, and yeah. it's done. Yeah. But when we think about history, there was a lot of road work. And a lot of, you know, laying down foundations, yeah. bro, that when I see certain things now, it, it, it's hard for me to see people disrespect forefathers and, you know, people that paved the way. And and even when I see somebody like, oh, man, they broke. I'm like, man, they, they broke so you could be rich. You know what? It's like, you know, those who don't respect the future will have a hard time. Basically, uh, I mean, excuse me, don't respect the past because... Basically, they're shooting themselves in the foot. So, like, if you say, okay, I'm a rapper and I'm 20 and you shouldn't be rapping when you're 40, you're basically putting a time limit yeah. on your career. Shouldn't you want rappers to stay around forever? Hey, bro, I, I've been in the business <laughs> long enough where I've seen that. Yeah. I won't name any names. Right. But I've seen people that came in the game yeah. and went at somebody. And I'll name one. You know what I'm saying? Another one is a little bit too close. But I remember when Nelly went at KRS-One. Yeah. And he was like talking about you were the first rapper since the microphones was and now you know now Nelly is very seasoned in in the hip hop and he game. respects everybody to death. He had that yeah. was a lesson he had to learn. Yeah, man, he had to learn. And Nelly's a good dude. Yeah, he is. You know, but it's, but we're young. You don't you don't understand where you're going. You don't understand. One of my favorite quotes comes from Frank Sinatra, and it's not how well you're doing; it's how long you're doing well. I heard that. Have you put that in one of your, yeah, it's your one daily? daily? Okay. Because <laughs> I was definitely about to use that one. You know? But, but it, is, it, it is about that. You know, even in the streets, you see the hustles that will blow up and in two years, then they yeah, catch man. a 20-year bid or they doing it for five years and then they're gone yeah. forever. It, the object is to try to get you a groove and rock it out so your children can, you know, live off of it, your family members, everything. It's not about, you know, and we were talking earlier, man, like all my heroes have died before me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up looking at Michael Jackson, gone. Prince, gone. And for a minute, you'd be like, man, I wish I had the flavor Prince or I, I was on that level. But they died. Right. You know, I was there seeing Biggie open for Craig Mack. Mm -hmm. I knew Pac when he was with Digital Underground. So my mama used to say, here's another one. If everybody you knew were in a room and we all threw our problems in the air, I bet you reach for yours on the way down. I say that all the time, Very man. Similar, yeah. you, you you walk out with the same problem you walked in with. You you Because you know where you stand and you don't want to be somebody else. You might want Bill Gates' money, but you don't want to be him. Right. You want to be you. So the thing of it is, is you just want to outdo yourself every day. I say life is like a gym. If you look over to the right, there will always be somebody in better shape than you. But if you look to your left, there's someone who would die to be in your position. I heard all that. you guys, there'll be somebody that would die to actually sit in this studio with Big Boy. That, I try to tell them that all the time. They <laughs> got to know that. Yeah. They got to know that. But you can get messed up, because, especially now with social media. The illusion is out there that people are doing so much greater in this. But that's a 
social media is a highlight reel of people's lives. Yeah, it's, man. it's that moment when, ooh, it's good light. I'm standing in front of this other person's <laughs> car. Take this picture. Blah. Okay, hold yeah. on. I've, whoa, that's the best I've ever looked. Hit me with that filter. Bow. And that's it. And then you put that together and say that's their life. Mm -hmm. It's not really their life. Mm -hmm. that, that's not true. And then the people that are living that life, it's rare. Yeah. It's rare. It's and they're the ones that's not taking pictures. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm exactly. Like, exactly. They're the ones who's not taking pictures. We're at the 50th anniversary of hip hop. <laughs> we were just kind of talking about that, man. And you took the stage for at, at the Grammys. Yeah. Now, <laughs> was that something that you wanted to do or <laughs> nah, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't at first I wasn't that excited. Right. Um, it, it, it built up like I get the call from Questlove and uh, he says, Ice, we want you to do the Grammy thing. I'm like, I'm in New York. You know, I'm doing that for you. It shoots on a Sunday. I got a call time Monday morning. You know, it's a lot of things. I was like, I don't know if I can make it. Then he tells me it's going to be from Flash all the way to Future, Lil Baby, everything chronologically. You, Too Short, West Coast. You guys were the first out of the West Coast. Yeah. Um I was like, uh, and he goes, you don't want to be the guy sitting at home that was invited mm -hmm. and didn't do it. And then you're telling people, you know, I could have been in yeah. that. And they're, they're like, shut oh. up, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Oh, then we sitting here like, and you had to keep it real. If I would have been like, Ice, how they do that without you? Mm. Right. Then you got to be like, big, they called me. <laughs> then I got to be and like, you would have oh. been like, you're lying. <laughs> you're lying. So I thought about it for about Five more seconds, and then I called George. I said, yo, we got to try to get off Monday. You know, we got to try to get off Monday. He goes, you got the next episode off because I'm out here to get the star. I get my star. Man, congratulations so, to you, bro. So so get there, and everybody was there. Yeah, man. You know, and plus they read it off. They said too, they said too short. See, these are my, my peers. Uh, everyone in hip-hop, but these are my peers. Too short, S Scarface, mm -hmm. Public Enemy. Male. The locks and Furious Five, but really the gangster rappers. <laughs> yeah. The ones that never get invited to nothing. Right. Scarface ain't getting invited to nothing. Yeah. They're not bringing out Jay to kissing the locks to nothing. They're not bringing PE out. They're not bringing Too Short or I. We never get it. I used to talk to Prodigy from Mob Deep, and he says, Man, Ice, we don't get on no red carpets, man. They don't want to see the mob. You know, I'm like, You're right. This is this, that level of rap the hardcore right. rappers don't ever get invited you know oh oh i left out method man yeah wu-tang doesn't get invited you know so they invited us and so we had to show them how how we do it you hey know? man <laughs> let me tell you man i can't i was sub and that was one of those things i didn't know it was going down right that was been would have been the only thing that got me to right. the grammy right Right. Because as I was sitting down, I was like, oh, <laughs> how did they do this? You know what I love too, man? Melly Mel, did he pack a shirt? No. Yeah. <laughs> man, my man Melly Mel would not pack a shirt, man. Muscle Simmons, we call him. <laughs> <laughs> That's Muscle Simmons. Yeah, Muscle Simmons, man. <laughs> but it just felt so good, man. And I, and I don't know what this, this next year is going to be for hip hop, but it looked like we're about to have some great things, man. And, and this is one of those things where, where even when you say da ha da ha, you thought the hip hop wouldn't make it this far or take it this far. That is real, man. We knew that we fell in love with something. I had a good time, and I I, I sat at the table at my table. I had Future, mm -hmm. I had Lil Durk. I never met them guys, you know, right. and they were cool. So I think I think that hip hop now is going through a zone where it's going to reform itself back i mean these are just growing pains you got to realize that right now we're just at the point where people are aging out of hip-hop i'm probably the oldest person in rap i'm mm -hmm. about to turn 65 right. so we're eight but but we never prepared for this right you know people have aged out of rock forever but you can't age out of rock you could be 75 on stage yeah you we've still seen play. that they love it and and people don't hate on it either though but see the problem with hip-hop is the first word is hip and how long can things stay hip See, that's the problem. It's the evolution of hipness that lasts five to six years and then it's old. So that word kind of got us. It's a, it's a, it's like a, like a, a catch twenty two. <laughs> damn yeah, because it's hip. Damn if you do, yeah. Yeah, what's hip? And, and and but I think now that they're getting to this age and people are seeing myself on stage and they're like, Ice is tearing yeah. this stage up. Yeah, man. Uh, 
Jada Kiss and them just ripped that verses. Like, yeah. we can't deny. Hey, man, <laughs> my daughter, 14 years <laughs> right. old, now everything is public enemy. She loved Flavor Flav when he, you know what I'm saying? And that was her introduction right. to public enemy was watching that performance. Can't deny it. You can't deny it. So I think the hate and the, the disconnect is going to start separating. And I see a great future for hip hop. You know, mm-hmm. I had a problem with hip hop when it got ring Tony. Right. Because right. I, I, well, you know, people say, well, Ice, you don't like the new rappers. I'm mean, hip hop always had a default word, which was whack. Mm-hmm. We, I, I just want to see you care about the craft and really get in there and bust some bars. You listen to Kendrick Lamar. How can you hate Kendrick Lamar? He's spitting his, you know, he's spitting. Yeah. You know, we just want to hear people rhyme. That's it. That's it. So is that too much to ask from a from an old school? Oh, you old, yeah. I mean, that's like somebody who like you know a jazz person and 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 and, and just, just want to hear you play right. that horn. And that's just like where you live too, man. You if you take care of the neighborhood, you don't want to see somebody fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? Just, just like, want them to respect it. Yeah, respect you just want, it. You just want them to respect it. And I think bars are coming back. Right. I think we the, see that. Yeah, the bars are coming, and that's all rappers care about. We just like rap. Just rap. Hey, man, I saw a picture with you and LL Cool J. And, any, and anybody that know some of the history of Ice-T and LL Cool J, y'all managed to have, you know, the so, the beef. Yeah. But y'all managed to exist. You know what I'm saying? The beef was the beef with LL was me. You know, I take I, I Oh, you said can say it. that now. No, I set it off. And the reason I did it was because at the time I was trying to come up out of L.A. Mm-hmm. And LL was like, I'm the greatest of all time. And the only way you're going to come up out of a city like LA is say, I don't think so. Right. <laughs> you're right. Because LA only only respects gangster. So I said, nah, I don't think so. And that was it. It was a challenge. And, you know, we went back and forth. I dissed him on, uh, I dissed him on, uh, I'm your pusher, yeah. and he came back for the break of dawn. Mm-hmm. I did a sim on another song called The Syndicate, but mm-hmm. it never got hostile. And uh, the funny thing was, um, I ran into LL Cool J in Monte Carlo. I heard that. How how international? See how, how hip hop? Go ahead. Now. Not in a Monte Carlo, right? <laughs> 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 and not the Monte Carlo Hotel in Vegas. <laughs> in the French Riviera. <laughs> And we were at a TV convention, and I saw L, and I walked over to him, and I said, "Yo, man, you know, no hard. This is this how is long how, ago is this? Maybe ten years ago. Okay, that's how long it been since I ever was in LL's presence. And I said, "No, man, no hard feelings, man. You know, he said Ice. It's, it was the culture. It was the culture. And by the way, I need you, Ice. I'm starting Rock the Bells Radio, and we need to show this. And da di da di da. And since then, me and LL." Uh, have done podcasts and talked about it and stuff. But no one had ever seen a picture. Now, that picture right. is the only picture of me and LL during our piece. Really? <laughs> yeah, since me and him became cool. Really cool. Like, right. friends, like, he's on my phone, we talking and stuff like that. That's the first picture. Hey, man, when you when we went through periods, and we see it also now, but when we went through periods where it was beef yeah. and we didn't make it through it, Yeah. How did that strike Ice T as the individual and the artist and the person that you are that you know carried a lot for hip hop? You know, the only the beef that didn't make it through was Pac and Big. Yeah, I wasn't really prepared for that. You know, like somebody actually dying. You know, and they didn't really die because of that beef. They died because of extenuating circumstances. But you know. Nobody wants somebody to die. Right. You know, like, this ain't, we ain't gangbanging. We're not out here, you know, you killed my friend, I'm going to kill you. It's, it's different. So, yeah, that that really hit me. And I was in New York, and I think after that, the East and the West spent a lot of time trying to just show unity. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a show on the radio called um, One Nation with Lisa Evers, mm-hmm. and they would put us on, East Coast and West Coast back in the days, and we would talk. I remember that. Yeah, to try to try to bring the uh, bring it the tension down. Now, nah, man, you know, rapping is rapping, and and dying and rapping is it's just not part of the game, man. I was in the streets, and and I got out of the streets to live to make music. Right. I'm not really with all that. Like, come on, man, come on. Like, so 
yeah, it bothers me now. I hear about the young kids and going to jail and all that kind of like, I'm like, you hustling backwards. Like, you get into this game. See, the thing that you don't understand is like when you're in the streets, you have anonymity. Nobody knows you. Right. Who did it? Lil Loke. Who's Lil Loke? I don't know. <laughs> but once you once you famous, they could pop up at your concert. It's like anything I do, I got to be, I'm totally held accountable for now because I can't, I'm on the radio. I'm saying it. It's my face. Who did it? Right. So now doing that and trying to, we used to call it being bow-legged, like one one lane in the legit world, the other lane. Can't do it because now you're famous and people start wanting to know your business. You think as a hustler you can move into Beverly Hills, but you can't because the neighbor wants to know what the fuck do you do? <laughs> yeah. They want to know. They want to see the cars. They, they're they connected to the city councilmen and governors. They can go run through your eye, through your taxes. They can figure you out. So you have to be... If you want to be, put it like this, and, and this goes out to people on social media, anything that's illegal should be kept a secret, period. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing anything illegal, you have no business telling anybody. Hey, man, I, I remember <laughs> when people used to be, you went through hella measures so people wouldn't know what you were doing. You know, you went through hella measures, man. You never said it. You never talked about it. You tried to stay as far away from it as you could. And that was some of the most ballingest people. Big boy, I got about five years of my life unphotographed. Mm. There are no pictures because we would not allow. I had a song where I say phobia of cameras. No cameras, no pictures. Because we got, we got those pictures popped up in courts. Right. Those pictures, we call them fed material. You know, the pictures, everybody posing with the gun. Yeah, man. You know, them, yeah, stop. I, they busted Shawnee Sean one time with one of those fed material. We had a, uh, a a shot of us on a bus, and everybody was doing it. We came from the gun shows down south, and we were doing the dumb shit, and they busted him. And he had to sit in the jail all night and tell him, those are prop guns. ICE is an actor. Those right, are. Right, right. <laughs> well, get him down here. Wow. Get him down here. My yeah. wife love him. Yeah, so, you know, those days it's over, so it's hard to, you know, but, you know, you're going to learn one way or another. You're going to listen to an OG say, hey, man, eh, or you're going to learn the hard way. I know I know, people got to understand that, you know, and when I say shit like this, people say, well, that's because you're the police. I'm like, dumb fuck, I'm not the fucking police. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm as far from a cop as you can get. Right. But you got to understand that social media is the number one tool of law enforcement. Yeah, man. The and, number and, one. And they're telling you. They're telling you they now, have, they bro. They have whole divisions of people that just sit on the internet and watch yeah. people talk. Yeah, man. I know I watch a lot of First 48. And even when I was watching <laughs> last night, they did one of those like, oh, I'm going on this Facebook page. And I'm like, mm. man. Like it's a whole new way. Let me tell like you. You story. testifying on yourself. I'll tell you a story. When I when uh, Coco and I moved into our house, uh, we moved into a new house. And the night she got we got there, a phone call came in, and the girl was telling Coco she was gonna die the next day. So you telling gonna, your wife, like telling Coco that she's gonna die. That Coco's gonna die. Right. So I'm like, what's going on? You know. So we got the number right. And I was like, "What? What? How do I handle this?" Now I've never used the police before. I'm not that guy. I'm not, I don't. I don't use cops. But this time I said, "You know what? I need. I've been on the on TV playing the cops so fucking long. They always say, why didn't you make a report?'" So I said, "Let me go make a report in case I got to kill a bitch." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You feel me? Yeah, get I'm, you get you a paper trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to the police <laughs> and I said, yo, somebody threatened my wife's life last night. This is the number. I'm just letting y'all know. Okay. And I'm not with the bullshit. So anybody come around, that's gonna get it. Oh well, we got to let us handle this. I said, I'm just letting you know, right? Let's write that what I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's gonna happen. Right. So so we go home, big boy, within I'll say 90 minutes, the cops showed up, showed us who the lady was, her Facebook page, oh her Instagram Lord. page. She was also uh, stalking Aunt Banks. Damn. Uh, no, not Aunt Banks. Um, uh, yeah, from, from G Unit. That's uh, Lloyd Banks? Lloyd Banks. Lloyd Banks. Oh. Aunt Banks from, from the, the Bay. From the Bay, yeah. And uh, I, I apologize. Lloyd Banks, um, apparently, dig this. Apparently, this woman was in a chat room. The cops found all this out. 
just from a phone number. She was in a chat room the day before where they were talking about black and white uh, interracial marriages. And the, in the, the context of the conversation said, if you're with a black man, he's going to end up beating you and killing you. This woman was calling Coco, telling her I was going to kill her. Oh, wow. This is how crazy this bitch was, right? So they showed me pictures, videos of this lady out in the backyard ranting and raving. She was crazy. 90 now, did, minutes later? 90 minutes. Now, how did she, how did they how did she find my number? Because it was listed because I have a gate, and that number to the gate went into the phone book. This is how fat I look. So they just told me, they said, look, disconnect that number, change the number. You can, uh, you can press charges because she did threaten your life, but... That type of person wants to be in court with you. And I ain't pressing charges on nobody anyway. Right. So, so, so I said, you know what? We'll let Patty. She said, plus she lives in such and such. She's a wacko. It's over. But n- my point is, 90 minutes they found her using social media and just a phone call. Yeah. With your number, I can, I can, I can go, I could find your house. I can get a satellite shot at the front of your door. Yeah, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't we know it? And we, I know this. Is we're going hard. in deep. We we're, this ain't a normal interview, man, right? I, man, <laughs> I, I, I mess with you though. If, do you have a top five, or is that too hard for you? I do my top five inch influential. Mm-hmm. Oh, influential. Who's that? The people that influence. Yeah, me. like who? Who? Who's on that list? Melly Mel. Yes, sir. Rock him. Yes, sir. Public Enemy. Mm-hmm. Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Uh. Hmm. Then it get. Then it's it's it's. I don't know. I, my favorite group is Mob Deep. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, Mel, Mel. Uh, he changed the trajectory of hip hop. Like when people were just talking about parties and stuff. Right. When he did the message. He put a message into the record. I no one. I, I'd only heard just fun rhymes. I never heard something serious. And so that was like, and then he did Beach Street Breakdown. We was talking about Mussolini. And yeah, you can't man. Look I was like, yeah, okay. that was that was like the second verse or the second run through on Beach Street was like a history lesson for me. Right. So that was Mel. 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 Mel was that. Rakim was just the flow. I never when I made Ryan Pays. Uh, Rakim was the record that was hit. Ryan New Pays York. the album or the single? The album. Okay. I was in New York in a every rec, every car. I came in the door. Yeah, I man. said it before. I never, never let, let the, the mic magnetize, magnetize me no more. more. And I ne- the way he was rapping, mm-hmm. I was like, "Yo, then he, then I know you got soul." Then oh he yeah, did, did uh, I ain't no joke. And oh I was my like, god, he couldn't miss, bro. His rap was so intertwined with the beat. I was like. I gotta get my shit tighter. I gotta, <laughs> you know, that's influence. Influence, yeah. like, you know, I can't leave out Schooly D because Schooly D right. influenced six in the morning. Right. You know, hey man, you know it's a trip about Schooly D. I was on Schooly D years ago, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I didn't even put Schooly D and Ice T or six in the morning. And is it PS, PS, PSK? PSK. PSK making that green. People always ask, what the hell does that mean? I didn't catch that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And until six you in the morning, police at yes. my door, and then Cube did "Boys in the Hood" are always hard. hard. So Schooly D was like, he's rapping about Parkside killers. He's rapping about street shit, and everyone was rapping about party shit. So when he did that, I'm like, okay, that's a green light. Plus, he wasn't yelling. Everyone was yelling on records. Right. <laughs> His nigga, PSK, we making that green. I'm like, who is this people fly motherfucker? Asked, what the hell does that mean? Peace yeah. for the people who can't understand. I'm like, that. that's hard. And he's so smooth. Even when he threatened you one by one, I'm, I'm knocking, knocking him out. out. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> put my pistol up against his head said suck ass nigga I should shoot you dead I was like okay this is that so PSK so then I what else I say I said um, um, Q yeah I've been known Cube since before I think he was even rapping you know he used to come to my shows back in the day and uh, I seen him go through CIA I yeah. seen him go through all the stuff but when when Cube laid them first bars is straight out of Compton it was like Yo, it was like to me, it was like a bomb just went off. Like that was the the greatest intro I ever heard in hip hop. You know, and 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 honestly, Cube is what made them coin our music gangster rap. 
Because before pro- it didn't have the title gangster rap. What what was your what was the label? I was going to reality rap, but okay. it, I knew it wasn't truly reality rap because everybody wasn't living my reality. Right. You know what I loved about your stuff too? Is if you made it to the third verse, like the first verse, we like, oh man, we getting this money. Second right. verse, oh, we party. Third verse, we got locked up, we got killed. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like man, cut out of this, cut out of this. Yeah. No, when Cube said straight out Compton, crazy motherfucking name Ice Cube from the gang called yeah. niggas, he t- called them the gang, and the press said it's gangster rap. And we said, all right, cool. You know? And that's when I said, okay, well, if it's gangster rap, I'm the original gangster. Wow. So let's do that. Let's that's what we're gonna call it. Well, who set this shit off? So that's how it went. And then, hey man, I love when you say your boy said, "That ain't you, Ice." That shit sound like him. So I yeah. sat back, thought of a new track, didn't fantasize, kicked the pure, pure facts. facts. Yeah, motherfuckers, motherfuckers got, got scared because they was unprepared. unprepared. Who would tell her how it really was? Who dared? A motherfucker from the, the West, West Coast, L.A., South Central food where the Crips and the Bloods play. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was it was a moment of, of of me realizing like this is what I need to do. You know. Don't don't rap like them. Yeah, do, do you this. and stuff. Who else? I said. I said. I said. Q. You said Mob Deep. Yeah, Mob mm-hmm. Deep. Public Enemy. P. E. P. E. Made us black. Yeah. P. E. Made me think. Okay, we could talk this shit, but you gotta say something that helps the people. Let's talk about it, and that's where you get N.W.A. Express yourselves and yeah. all, and Ice T being political to an extent. My Thank man you. Chuck D said the follower of Farrakhan. Yeah. And when you look at, even now, when you look at P.E. concerts and you look who's in the audience, mm-hmm. they talk their shit. And and that's the same with Karis one that edutainment. But but Chuck said also, the follower of Farrakhan, don't tell me that you understand until, until you, you hear, hear the, the man. man. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Panther Power for, on, you know, uh, 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 and Rebel Without the Pause, he's talking about Panther Power. Mm-hmm. I mean, the energy of Public Enemy and the Bomb Squad was just like, oh you know, my lord! And then think about it, Cube when he left NWA went, went to, to the them. Bomb Squad, right? Yes. Yeah. So and then Mob Deep, they just took you. The 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 whole energy of Mob Deep was just so gangster and so and it's so apolitical. Like them, it's nothing about positivity. It's just right. straight gangster. <laughs> yeah. It's just straight the done language, but. I think music is entertainment, and when you want to go there, right, you go there. When you want to, when you want to see a horror movie, you go to Stephen King, right. When you want to go into the darkest of the Queens Bridge and all that whole stuff, and just the production of of uh, Havoc and Alchemist, who's from out here, mm-hmm. and all that, they have a whole different energy. It was like if you're going to think about who makes the darkest, hardest gangster music, would be Mob D. Ice-T, I want to do something with you called For Real, For Real, For False, For False. You know, for keeping it real. When I ask you something, if it's for real, big, that's for real. Elaborate if you need to. Okay, I hope. I'll write it down. His role on Law & Order, SVU, was only supposed to be four ep- episodes. That's for real. Really? That was for real. They they just called me out there, and I was like, do four episodes, and... Um, after that, they said, well, we kind of like you, but we don't know. That's called the kiss kick. Right. Like, they don't want to say we love you because you asked for more money. So they say, ah, but maybe if you want to, we could keep you. And uh, I, I went along for the ride. Yeah, four episodes turned into 24 years. All right. He once gave Neil a go-ahead to squeeze, squeeze his wife Coco's butt. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, really? No. <laughs> True. That ended up on the internet, and 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 Neo decided to share that. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were at a Halloween party, and uh, we were there with Rihanna, and uh, everybody was partying, and everybody was, and Coco had on some booty shorts and some fishnets, and asses were very prevalent yes. in the area, and Neo was just looking at it like it was a, you know, like. It was some magic. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, oh, gee. I mean, I mean, probably in his brain he says, I'm a squeezer, but then Ice might punch me in the face. Right. So he went real player. He said, Ice, man, I mean, yeah. what, can I touch Coco's ass? Like, Damn. <laughs> Closed mouth don't get fed, huh? But, you know, he was so player about it. I said, yeah, I can. I, yeah. I mean, if, that, that, if that's something that'll make yeah. I, I love Neo. Right. If that's something like that. And Coco was right there. I said, Coco, Neo wants great. But she, she looked at me. I said, he went up. He did a, a great. He just squeezed it once. Nice. <laughs> one hand. It wasn't one hand squeeze. Right. 
And he looked at me, and he and he. I feel he still appreciates that <laughs> today. <laughs> now, a lot of people. Oh man, I wouldn't let. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. But that, that's your woman. I I get it. I, I mean, me. I'm not. That type of person. I'm a player. That. If it's handled correctly. Right, right, right. right with right. all respect. Now, you know, if somebody is walking up groping your girl, of course you might have a problem with that. I don't know you, nigga. What's happening? Right. You know what's happening? <laughs> yeah. But it was very player. All right. For like, real, for real. <laughs> I mean, yeah. His album, Ryan Pays, was the first album to carry a parental virus advisory label. That's for real. Really? I don't know why I thought it was like a two live crew album. We were out in the same time, but no, they didn't get the parental guidance sticker. That came out on mine. It came through Warner Brothers. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, they they questioned me. They said, hey, they want to put this sticker from the PMRC. And I was like, I don't really care because I'm not trying to bait and switch nobody. I want you to know what's in the album. I'm never trying to trick you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's guns and a girl in a bathing suit on the cover. Like, what the fuck you think is going to happen inside? I always said, if you bought a Stephen King novel and it's a heart, a knife in the back of somebody. Don't get mad. Somebody got killed on the third page. Like you already. Right, right, I'm yeah, telling you right, what this yeah. is. You look at power. We got Uzis and right. shotguns. Like what's yeah. going to happen in this record? So uh, and, and the first parental guidance stick, it was kind of like an phallic symbol. It was it was flat on the bottom. It was arched on the top. Almost looked like a condom or a mm -hmm. bullet. And then people would say, well, it's a bullet. And I'm like, okay, that's where your head is at. Oh, right. it's 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 a condom. Oh, that's where your head is at. So I was playing with the, even the sticker, but yeah, it was I was the first one. He doesn't want anyone talking to him for ten minutes after he's done performing. Uh, yeah, that that that's true. I mean, it's not that I don't want anybody talking to me. It's just that you got to come off that adrenaline, right? Uh, when you're on stage, you kind of go into a different out of body place with adrenaline. People that perform know you go into this place where you're just amped up, and especially near the end of the show, you're at full power, you know. And so, as soon as you walk off the stage, you want somebody to get in a conversation like right. this. So let me talk to me about real estate or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Come on, let me calm down yeah. for a minute. So what I what I do with body count is. At the end of the show, they kind of move me off the stage and to my dressing room or whatever, and it takes a minute, and I calm down. I clean up a little bit. And are they still playing out? No, no. Okay. No, but the, whoever wants to talk to me, I think that's normal. Right, right, right. Give them some space. I think that's normal. I don't care if you go see Beyonce. It's like she just performed. She's not coming out for 20, 30 right, minutes. Right, right, right. Then she'll come out, and she's... Or if you're ushering, I had Doc Winter wait for two hours. <laughs> just, just wanted to throw that out there. Doc, uh -huh. Doc, I got him. I got him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, two I hours him. is a little. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I've actually been so, like, blasted at the end of the show. And then it's a lot of people. And you just, like, you got to get yourself together so yeah. you could be right. And everybody wants that moment. I'll tell you the moment I really don't like is right before I perform. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're in your own head and you're you're trying to remember all your stuff. And that's when people want to come up and have a conversation with you. Like, hold on. So it's kind of like five minutes before the show. Right. 10, 15. Let you zone out. Yeah, because you got to go to a place. And honestly, live performance to me now is more important than ever because if you slip and fall on the stage, you're a meme. It's like, whoop, whoop, yeah, whoop, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they, they, they <laughs> waiting on you to have a bad performance. Even when we did the Grammys, even though I said New Jack Hustler a hundred times, there is a cue coming in after Scarface. What Scarface right. is saying is, doom, do -da, do -doom, do -da. I had to come in, hustler. hustler. If I miss that, right. it's over. And yeah. it's live. And you can't go bring that back. Right. So you're you're on point. You're listening hard. You're, I mean, people say, if you're not nervous, it means you don't care. Mm. It means you don't care. Now, stress is caused by giving a fuck. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Another ice cold fact. Hey, hey man, <laughs> do you know how to tell people no? Is that something that you had to work on or have your tolerance or? Absolutely not to say no now. I didn't, but uh, I had to learn. I, I learned the hard way, big boy. When I first became semi-successful and I had records out, for a minute I could not hold my food down. Mm -hmm. And I would eat and I would throw it up. And uh, people saw that I had ulcer and stuff. So I went to a gastrologist. He looked at my stomach. He said, you're perfect, man. So he sent me down the hall to a sports psychiatrist. This is a guy that helps guys hit 100-mile-an-hour fastballs while they're going through a $100 million divorce. 
You got to get your head right for this. You can't bring that divorce to the game. You have to compartmentalize it. So this guy helps people like that. So he sits there and he says, Ice, tell me your problems. So I talked for 20 minutes and he goes, I got a prescription for you. He wrote on a piece of paper and pushed it at me. And it said, no. He said, you just talked for 20 minutes. You didn't tell me any of your problems. You told me all your friends' problems. Wow. Right now, life is great for you. This is the moment you've been waiting for. You're extremely happy. But there's a guilt that goes along with success. Because you're successful and everybody isn't, you feel you got to take care of them and you can't. You're going to hurt yourself. You're actually physically making yourself sick. He says, you got to say no. He said, make a yes, a very difficult yes. And this is what he taught me. When you say yes, you turn someone else's problems into yours. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's give, true. Give you an example. Say your name again, big homie. That's Jose. Jose. Jose says to me, Ice, can you take me to the airport? I say, yeah, man, I got you. I got to get up. I got to get gas in my car. I got to be on time. I got to pick Jose up. I got to get him to the airport. And guess what? If I'm late, he gets to be mad at me. Right. <laughs> wow. Max. I just turn his problem yeah, into yours. Wow. So sometimes you just got to say, nah, man, I'm not the one. I can't do that right now. I learned an important lesson from you mm -hmm. years ago that I've never shared with anyone. Mm. And I'll share it with y'all today. Oh, wow. I'm probably like 17 years old. Mm -hmm. We're in Culver City at the Veterans Auditorium. Mm -hmm. There's a dance going on there. It wasn't Uncle Jams. It was uh, who used to do the dance there? G-Bone Capone now? TDF. Yeah, right. yeah TDF. Yeah. Them, yeah. And so I'm sitting there, and Ice-T is right there. And, you know, they had like a, like probably a few rows of seats. And at that time, me and my buddies, we, we rapped. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we like, oh, man, that's iced tea. So we sitting down and you, you're giving us conversation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I say, man, I say, can you rap for Can we rap for you? You said no. I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not like, no, but it was like, nah. but, but no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but let me tell you, man, it taught me a lesson. You know what I'm saying? It taught me. And, and it was like, no, get away from me, fat motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it was like a because what was you what was that what were you supposed to do? But you know Lean what? In, I, then I'm gonna rap in your ear, spit all in your ear, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm rapping over music already, you know what I'm saying? So I hate street auditions. I think yeah. all rappers know I found that, that out. People <laughs> people want to come up and spit bars to you and you know, if you want to get somebody's attention, hand them a tape, hand them a CD, hand them, right. well, not a tape anymore, or give them now, tell them follow me or something. Because rapping in public to people is usually the wrong time. Oh my it's God. just not right. I don't feel like going in a cipher. I'll tell you a funny story. We were in, um, we were in uh, Manhattan, so it was me and about six homies from L.A., and they're move, we're moving through Times Square. So some of them had never been there. So we I'm sightseeing. <laughs> but you know, they got their West Add Coast. Your ulcer. They got their West Coast swag going. And this one guy walks up and he goes, Yo, man, yo, man, ice, I can rap this, that, and the third. Now my boys, they 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 not even rappers. They just like, you know, this dude is bothering ice. It wasn't really bothering me, but it was we weren't really paying attention. So his his rhyme goes something like this. He gets up, he says, yo, my flow, this, wop, the, whoop, whoop, wham, wham, this, 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 And then after a minute, he goes, that was that, 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 like, you give a fuck about anything I'm saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you caught that? Oh. Yeah. He just said, like, and we all said, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, okay, sorry, man. Yo, man, this ain't the right time, man, you know. He just seen we wasn't paying attention. He said, yeah, some, man. some, 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 like, you give off. I was like, oh man, and I never forgot that. Hey man, you got me on my inhale. I was like, can we rap for you? Oh, okay. <laughs> Any MCs out there, you already know that it's not the it's not the right time oh, to man. spit bars to somebody in a restaurant, in a restroom, on the street, oh, yeah, at man. the street corner. Oh my god, I man. mean, you gotta go for it when you can. I did but... major therapy after that. Oh. Major oh. therapy, man. Hey, dude. Sorry, people. But look, 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 look what happened to you. Yeah, yeah stop rapping. <laughs> we got, we got a career, I, I see a a career, career changing yeah. moment. Hell yeah, you did. Man, and we were kind of speaking about this off air as well, man. Ice T's daily game, facts of the game, uh, facts for the game of life. Now, for those that follow you on, on social media, We've seen you drop this knowledge for years on social media. Those that follow Ice, we already knew Ice T that you 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Your, your slang and your tongue has always been slick. Mm-hmm. Now you're in a, a position where iHeart sees the gold and the platinum mm-hmm. and the titanium that's in this work that you've been doing. What made you sit down and say, you know what? I'll go ahead and, and you and when we say podcast, man, you know what I love about it mm-hmm. is that it's real quick game. Five minutes. Yeah, you don't elaborate. You don't come back and say, you know what I'm saying. And this, it, you're like, you give it to us and you go. But we know people's attention spans short now. Yeah. So we wanted to make something that they could get every day. But yeah, like like I like you say, I'm on Twitter. People that don't know, not follow me. I'm at Final Level. The reason I named it Final Level, that's my production company. So, uh, you know, and I feel the final level is inner peace. Mm. That's the final level when we finally are happy with ourselves. And so how do we find these every day? These are going to be on all, anywhere you go through your podcast, whether you go on Apple, whether you go to Spotify, anywhere the podcast, you just put in Ice T's Daily Game and they'll pop up and then you 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 follow them and they'll pop up every day. Wow. And, uh, you know, they're just I mean, I, I've been around so many players and I've learned so much game from different people. And like even today, even in this conversation, I'm dropping them. You know, one of my uh, one of my player buddies used to always tell me, uh, well, player, if it seems like you're going in circles, it's probably because you're cutting corners. Right. You know? right. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and that is real, and that's real. You hey know, man, and, and so wow. I think that with something like that, it never stops. You know, when you go do something, they say, "Well, do you have eighty-eight episodes?" Or do you like this? Never stops because the game don't stop. Well, you know what? It's funny. I did two hundred of them just to get started. Damn. And then uh, we we did research, and it's one a day. Yeah. My man was like, man, I'm almost done for the year. <laughs> well, you got to, you got to, hey, man, I'm trying to stay alive, man. They was like, you got one front, weekend. <laughs> gotta, I'm front loading everything. Yeah, you know I heard what I'm saying? That. But, but uh, uh, they did research on my Twitter page and they said I've dropped 2,500 of them. Damn. Yeah, 2,500. And some of these are from, from, from philosophers. Some of right. them are from, like, I quote Wesley Snipes and different people. And, and, and I saw the Wesley Snipes. Tyler thing. Perry. Where well, you was like, yeah, do your taxes. Remember? He said, no, oh, no, that wasn't it. My bad. Oh, <laughs> My bad. Sorry about that, George. Yeah. <laughs> you making I Look, I fuck with the police. I don't fuck with the IRS. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> don't play with them. Yeah, hell no, them, bro. You come home, they, your, your Ferrari be on a tow truck. Yeah. <laughs> and I always tell people, man, with the fans, I'm like, man, they don't build a case. No. They come at you when they have the case. And it's too late. Yeah, it's too late. They, they, they. I'm, I'm. Listen, let's stop talking about cops and robbers. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So the daily game is something, and it, it's inspirational. It's nothing yeah. negative, and it's just different little points that uh, I've learned from different people. Like I say, Bishop Juan or all my other player buddies, or they'll tell me something. I say, man, I gotta hold that. And we in the streets, we call them a jewel. Right, right. Yeah, that's a jewel. Yeah. And, and uh, I love that you throw it back too, though. As E40 would say, you give it back to the community, you know, yeah. because wherever you got it from, you'll say, "Hey, this person said, or I got this from," you know. Well, you know, the, um, speaking of Minister Farrakhan, let's go there. I met with Farrakhan back in the day with him in a, uh, at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's house, and mm-hmm. he used to everything he would say. He would say in the words of Elijah Muhammad. And I said, why do you always say that? He said, because those are his words. And for me to say his words as they were mine, I'd be worse than a thief. Mm. So all a player really wants you to do is throw him that great poupon. Now, that's a that's an age right, 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 right. A lot of people don't know what that means. But if Big Boy taught me something, how hard is it to say, man, I'm Big Boy gave me this game? Yeah, you know, what, why? yeah man. That's it. What, what? How hard is it to say it? You know, so when I do get it from somebody else, I say, "Yo, my man, whoop, told me this one, and I heard this from here and that." And um, speaking on that, mm-hmm. you know, I just had we just had this conversation probably late last week where I was explaining to them about ninety nine problems. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And when it came to you know our ninety nine problems early on was you know ninety nine problems and a bitch ain't one with, with Marquise. Yeah. Well, look at this. I'm at the Grammys and Jay Z comes to me. He says, "Ice." You know I love you, right? I said, yeah. He says, well, you know, it's on the internet that you mad. I said, I'm not mad. They're bringing up all kind of interviews about it, and they asked me the story, and I told them the true story. And he goes, yeah, man, but there's no hard feelings, and he starts talking about how me and him, because I mean, I met Jay-Z way back in the day. Big Daddy Kane brought Jay-Z to my house back in the day when he was 
starting out. I used to take Jay around, roll my car, him and Dame Dash. So we're friends. But I said, yo, well, you know, at the end of the day, we did 99 problems at the end of the record. You could have said, Ice! Right. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> could have given me a little dab or something. Yeah. I said, but I'm not mad at it. But what happened was people wanted to know the story. And the story is, the st you want to hear the 99 problems story? Yes, please. The whole mm -hmm. thing. I'm in my house with Brother Marquise. I'm at my studio. And we were talking about, we were talking <laughs> about uh, Whoop, There It Is. Uh -huh. Now, Whoop, There It Is comes from Magic City. The, the tag team were the DJs at the Magic City. And when the girls would bend over, yeah. they'd say, Whoop, Whoop There It Is. is. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. <laughs> but you know, but but you know what they're talking about. There it is. Right. Okay. Ooh, there, there it is. is. Okay. So Marquis says to me, "Nigga, I'm sitting there all them nights in Magic City. That was the phrase that pays, man. Like he's like, I missed that tag. Then out of nowhere, he goes, man, I got nine nine problems. A bitch ain't one. I said, what you just say? Um. And he said, yeah. I got. And I said, that's a song. So I made the song. Uh, you know, I got a hoe from the east, I got a hoe from the west, mm -hmm. and then Marquise does a verse. And that's it. Now, as the legend goes, Rick Rubin and Jay were getting ready to make a record, and Chris Rock was around, and they said, What record should we remake? And Chris Rock brought up 99 Problems. Jay Z remade the song. He changed the verses, but he even took the hit me, hit me, you yeah. know, so he did it. No harm, no foul. It was a publishing deal. Publi my, at that time, my publishing was owned by, I think, Warner Chapel or either Universal. Universal. They paid, you know, blah. No harm, no foul. I had a deal, blah. And that was it. And they say, those who say don't know and those who know don't say. I didn't come out saying, oh, Jay-Z went after this, that. But now we're in the social media area. Mm -hmm. And they like, let's see what we could turn into a beef. Let's see what we could turn into a problem. I got no problems with Jay Z. It's the people that know, know the people that don't. Right. And don't. when you were asked about it, you just told your truth. So I said, that's how it happened. Jay didn't steal it. Right. He, you know, we we make stuff. And then I seen one where they say Bun B's verse was part of Bun B's verse. I'm like, look. Y'all want to be mad at Jay Z, whatever. I'm not right. mad at Jay Z. And y'all had that conversation just at the Grammys. That Grammys, just he walked up to me because <laughs> right. because all it is all is social media. They create beef, and it ain't beef. So he's like, you know, I love you. He thought I was angry. Mm. I'm like, dude, I'm not angry. I, I didn't. You never heard me say nothing bad about you. But I did. I hit him. I said, you could have yelled. Oh, it's my yeah. nigga. Like, yeah. But if you listen to the Seventh Deadly, you told him that. Yeah. Yeah. But if if you listen to the Seventh De Seven Deadly Sin. Jay Z does an intro for me. He's mm. on the Seventh Deadly Sin talking. Yo, Ice, what's up? Yo, Rock. He, I have no beef with Jay Z whatsoever. Uh, it's just how it happened. Right. And um, you know, shout out to brother Marquise from Two Live Crew. And uh, you know, what's up? And you know? Mar Marquise got a problem with Jay Z. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Marquise might, might, Marquise <laughs> might. I don't know. You know, the thing of it is, is when you know. When, when things like that blow up, everybody's like, yo, yo, people get in your business. You get your money. You know, right. Like, why are you worried <laughs> yeah. about shit? You know, I'm not even tripping. No, I love Jay-Z. Jay-Z is a very supernatural human being. Yes, sir. Ice-T, definitely want to thank you for coming into yeah. the neighborhood, bro. Mm -hmm. We, we got to mm -hmm. do this again. When do you get your star? On the 17th. The 17th, Ooh. if you in L.A., pull up out on uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, is that crazy for you? As many times as I've been looking at that star like this. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, wow. Face through the concrete, boot on your face. Yeah, all that. Hey, you man, know. it's crazy because how many times have you either walked through Hollywood, when you say boot on your face in Hollywood, either pulled over or, and now, and, and it's, it's another accolade. When I got my star... I was oh, like, you got man, one. Yeah. Oh, that soft flex. Yeah, the yeah. No, no, that was a hard flex. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, man. Speak on it, Jeff. Speak I was on it. really like, man, I was homeless yeah. walking through Hollywood. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? I would look down, not thinking I was going to get one. Right. But to actually be cut from the turf. And it, man, that right there. I remember DJ Quick, he asked me, he said, my, boy, he said, man, big. He said, why did you cry? I said, bro, you don't understand yeah, yeah. what was going through me. At that moment, man. I don't know what's going to happen to me, man. You know, like, 
I'm not as excited. And you about did it, it your way, though. I'm not as excited about it as other people. Right. Everyone's like, "Yo, your kids and people are flying in and different things." And I'm like, "Yo," but I think when I get there, that moment might yeah, hit man. me because never in a million years did I think I would even be iced tea. You know, I was just a street hustler. Yeah. You know, and now to be TV and movies. And I think that's why I, I've always remained very humble and know how easy this could go, right. how fragile everything is, and how I never felt like I was supposed to be it. Right. See, certain people get in this game, oh, I'm supposed to be a star. So when they get it, I guess they feel like they've arrived where they're supposed to be. Me, I'm like, they ain't going to let me in this. Hey, man, do you ever think like, not that, not like, it, but do you ever think sometimes where it's like, damn, this, not that this could go away, but man, I've been doing this and not if they figure me out, because it's not like we're frauds. Right. But it's like, what the hell is going on? Like, I don't want this to go away. And I'm definitely not going to fuck it up for myself. You know what it is? I figured it out that it's all about your legacy, big boy. Mm. At the end of this day, it ain't the money. Right. Uh, it's nothing. It's how your name is represented for your kids and the people that love you when you're gone. If your name is strong, like my daughter's in Atlanta. She said, I'm Ice-T's daughter. They opened the ropes for her. Right. Little Ice is like, oh, I'm in L.A. I got juice. I'm like, you got juice? That's yeah. my juice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, your but, cup runneth over because of me. Right. But if I play myself or they at find a way to character assassinate me or ruin me. Like Bill Cosby's kids can't run around saying they Bill Cosby's kids. Right. You know, they when they ruin your name on the way out, it hurts your family. It hurts your legacy. That's what they're gonna live off. Not the money. It's 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 I was Ice T's man. I'm a you know you I met Chuck D's daughter the other day. Oh my I'm like whatever you need. Like I yeah, opened the, yeah, ga yeah, the gates yeah. open. So that I remain a solid cat all the way out is more important than any financial gain or anything. So this star is part of it. It's part of the legacy. And it was like, yeah, yeah, your dad was here, and he did his damn thing, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's very touching when man. you really start thinking about it, Hell considering yeah. where we came from. Yeah, man. And and no one knows where we're going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when, but, man, congratulations to you on that. Yeah, Congratulations on just uh, not even just a great career, but just always being a solid human mm -hmm. being. Yeah, and that, I always that, that's say, most important. Yeah, I tell people, I say, man, character is what's being said about you when you're not in the room, mm -hmm. and people speak very well about you, bro. Mm -hmm. and, and and it is an honor as a fan first to also have you as a comrade, as a friend, as someone that I you know every time I see you, it's always love. Love, yeah, and yeah. I appreciate you, bro. Fifty Cent said, "Here's another one." He says. No man can be great alone. You're only great when other great men speak of you in high regard. Go ahead now. There it is. I'm going Ice to... cold fact. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ice tea in the neighborhood right there. Big boy's neighborhood.